Hey, welcome back to the Young Quisitions Knitting Podcast, where I do fiber arts, knitting, crocheting, showing old stuff, showing new stuff, whips, swatches, you know, the whole shebang, and then um, yarn acquisitions, hence yarn acquisitions, if there are any. Um, I don't think there will be any, um, this week just because, um, I've been trying not to buy extra yarn because I just bought a lot of yarn, like, last month. Um, and the beginning of March... It was like end of February, beginning of March. I just like bought a lot of yarn and then now I'm trying to use it. Um, but a lot of it is like wool and it's gonna be summer. So I don't know. And I have sweater plans. So yeah, you gotta definitely got to plan more summer knitting things but before that I'm not wearing any knitted stuff because um, it's like that in-between phase it's like not too hot but not too cold to be wearing um, sweaters and I can't wear the camisole that I finished I'll show you later um, I mean, I think I wore it, like, in the last podcast, but it wasn't, like, totally done. I didn't weave in the ends, I didn't block it, yada yada, yeah. So, I'll just show you the first old thing, which is this huge black doily. Can you see it in all its glory? Hmm. Oh, I think you can see it better like this. Although you see like all the holes and stuff. I think this is like 18, 20 inches, 24 inches, something like that. Um, and I think I crocheted this on a, ooh, maybe a five millimeter needle crochet hook. Um, I don't remember, but I know that the yarn that I used for it is a 100% acrylic and, oh, and it's worsted weight. Acrylic worsted weight because it was cheap and I needed a lot of it to like complete this doily. And this is just the bigger version of like the smaller one that I showed you several episodes ago. Like, I don't like one of the early episodes. Um, gosh, I don't even know where I put it. Hold on. Here it is. It's this one. This is a small version, which is like, I don't know, six inches across ish, seven. And it's one of the doily patterns in that book. It's this one, the one on the cover. So it looks like this, and and a yarn that's or er, and mercerized cotton that's uh, way smaller than the yarn that this calls for. I mean, the yarn that they use 
the recommended yarn at least is the oof, size 10 crochet thread. I think that's what they said. Mm, yes, bedspread weight cotton thread size 10. And they use a size 7 least crochet hook, which is a 1.65, but I'm sure you can use like a 1.5 or 1.9 or 1.7. Well, I have a 1.75, so. Or no, not 1.75. Um, I think I used a 0.75 millimeter needle for this. But I mean, you can also use the one millimeter needle as well. Although I think that's a little big for this. Or 0.9 millimeter. Um, Cause this is a size 40 lace crochet thread. So that's like three sizes smaller. Or I guess two sizes smaller because they don't make a, do they make a size 30? I don't remember. But I know they make a size 10 or there's companies that make size 10, 20, and then 40. I don't know about that 30 though. I really don't. Um, and in the book, I think, let me check which one it is. It's the exceptional um, doily. Yeah, extra special doilies by Leisure Arts. It's like the second one, third one, no, oh, fourth. It's the fourth one, smack dab in the middle. Here's a less shiny picture. It didn't wait, but whatever. Oh, I can't remember when I did this. Like, it could be. Ooh. I mean, I guess when I bought that book, like 2017, maybe? When I was still in university, maybe? Mm. Something like that. I'll still have like one end to leave it, but I actually let my cats use this um, when it's like kind of cold. They just like, or one of the cats lay on it, my black cat. So if you see fur on it, that's the black cat, so. I don't know why my other cat doesn't like it. And um, for the finished object, it's the canvas of number four. I showed it, I wore it, but that was pre-block. And then now it's blocked. All the unevenness in it like totally came out. Um, and I noticed when I blocked it that it was like kind of flaring at the bottom and that may be due to um, just uh, binding off too loosely um, but in the pattern it says to bind off loosely so I did or I tried my best to because um, I'm a perpetual not perpetual What's it? Serial, uh, well, I just bind off super tight all the time, um, because I'm a tight knitter. I mean, I think I'm a tight knitter. Um, I thought that the, what do you call it? The cast on here and here would be like too loose. I, I guess it blocked out fine. Um, yeah. I mean, it's pretty hard to um, 
weave in the ends because it's silk and it shows every little like imperfection honestly um it still curls in a little bit on the edges but i'm sure if i block it one more time it'd be fine um yeah and i just tossed it in a delicate bag and i put it in uh, the washing machine on cold wash cold normal and i put it in a delicate bag with my other wash cold clothes um, and then I pulled it out and, and lay, laid it flat to dry and then when I laid it flat to dry um, or blocked it uh, I like pulled it on like this because it was really wide and I don't want it to be like super wide and not long enough because when you pull it out it gets shorter and then when you pull it like lengthwise um it gets less wide i don't know whatever uh well i wore it once when it was like super hot like a few days ago and yeah that was uh, saved my butt it was like 91 and that's summertime temperatures no bueno in the spring ish spring because winter and spring is like pretty similar um but yeah it's april but we're transitioning to summer may is also a transition month and it doesn't become summer until june when uh temperatures stabilize here so yeah well at least i know what to do with the extras which i will tell you at the after the whips yeah i'll tell you after the whips and oh my lonely lonely sad sweater number nine has been neglected for I don't know, I guess since the last episode, like two weeks. I mean, I tried to work on it last week, but that didn't pan out so well. I only did like one um, sequence or until the next, um, what do you call it? Decrease on the, sl on the first sleep. I'm still on the first sleep. Like, I didn't do anything. Like six like five rows ish uh last week and no rows this week like or rounds no rounds this week so yeah I, st I mean this would be nice to wear today because it's not too hot but not even done and uh, i don't know how people like do the bind off but for whatever reason, I just bound this off like super tight. And now it cinches in. So it's a little weird. Hopefully, it'll just come out. Oof. But yeah, I don't know. The bind off situation is a little weird. Because I think they use like two different bind offs. And I should have just stuck to one, honestly. Like, can you see that? I had to use two different bind offs. I don't know. Because I saw a bind off, um, like a different bind off method on Instagram. I think it's like, you slip one, uh, yeah, if you slip one knitwise and then you um, knit through the back loops to bind off, but that gives you like a weird result. Or not a weird result, it's just a different result than what I was aiming for. 
um, because it shows the knit stitch like outwards or like to you but the other side is, is the pearl it looks like pearls so I don't like the pearls on the other side but I don't want the knit to be facing me I just want it to be like facing down I guess I don't know if that's um, something you can visualize like yeah I don't know and I made Earl Grey Milk Tea and it already has a piece of cat hair in it like how Well, I mean, I guess I breathe in fiber all the time anyways, so cat hair is no big deal. It's even finer than um, some of the fibers that I use. Um, and then my second whip is still this really nice sweater, the Pavlova pullover, I said my knits on Instagram, aka Hannah Sadler, um, it was just so, it's so fun to knit, but for whatever reason, I took like four days to make this sleeve or something, but I got this finished in two days, or until here in two days, and I'm probably gonna finish it today um, unless I don't get to it today and you'll find out why in a bit um, I did wear this and it does um, drape nicely but I thought or at least in the photos it looked like that the neckline starts like right here or at least like right here, right? So it goes like that. I was hoping it'd be like that, but it's actually like pretty up there. <laughs> um, but it's not like a turtleneck by any means. It's just like right here. It starts here and not here where I thought it would. Um, because the person who made this is like three inches shorter than me but she made size two so and this is the size one which is made for x small size two is like a small um and the pattern like the body is quite short because i thought it would be like the 52 uh, centimeter range but it's actually quite shorter than that um, I think it's like 40 something centimeters so if I wear it with this dress I'm wearing a dress <laughs> if I wear it with this dress it's like perfect but if I wear like jeans or like something that is like below like far below my belly button then it can show a little skin, which is nice for like spring, I guess, on the cooler days. Because you definitely can't wear this on the hotter days, like 80 degrees. Like, no, you can't wear a sweater. So, um, yeah. Or like on a windy spring day, this, is, this would be nice. Um, Yeah, I mean, I guess not not spring in other places because it gets way colder in other places, but in coastal California, this is perfect. Um, yeah, and hopefully it'll rain in like two days because it's cooling down again. <sighs> On this heating up, cooling down, I like really hate it. 
because I'm so used to consistent temperatures. Because I grew up in San Francisco where it's always like 60, 65 range and never really goes up unless there's a heat wave. And if it's 90 in San Francisco, you basically have to live in malls because ain't nobody have AC in their house. So, yeah, because heat waves only come like every other year, it's not every year. So, and there's, and there could be like several years where there are no heat waves in San Francisco. So, it doesn't make sense to have AC when you're not gonna use it like ever, like once every few years. Like, um, <clears throat> but this apartment has AC because. Um, I'm in South Bay. South Bay is notoriously hot in the summer, especially if you go more inland, like Gilroy, can, can get over 100 every year. I can't live there. <laughs> and people there need, also need AC. Although the farm animals don't get that luxury but I'm almost done and then I get, get to work I already took a lot of photos uh, if you follow me on Instagram um, I shared a lot of photos on my stories but I don't save the stories because I don't I just feel weird about it I don't know what to save or what to just keep private or whatever or let it expire, like, I don't, I can't pick. Um, and then I also kept on the, what do you call these? The stitch markers. Um, because I'm too lazy to take it off. But I left it on this sleeve so I know how many, like, increases I did. Which is, I did the recommended increase, or decreases, sorry, not increase. Or did the recommended decreases, and then I added, like, a crop ton of length. Because I want the, I want the sleeves to be, like, um, up to here-ish. And not all the way down here. Because I can't deal with, like, the three-quarter, seven-quarter, or seven-eighths length sleeves like I just can't do that it's too short I just want it to be like bam right here and um yeah this fabric is surprisingly stretchy I think I said that last time as well but yeah you could definitely like block it to be longer so then it'll be like a little more form-fitting and yeah the sleeves can be longer as well or if you wanted to, the sleeves to be like more roomy, then you could just block it like that. Just stretch it out. I also didn't do the um, recommended decreases at the at the cuff or before the cuff because um, I didn't want it to be too tight on my wrist, and I know that. Because I bind off so tightly, I know that um, if I did those decreases, I would have a hard time putting my hand through because my hand is, you know, so much larger than my wrist. I think most people's hands are larger than their wrists. So that would be no bueno for me. So yeah, I didn't do the decreases at the I'm trying to think were there decreases for the body I don't think there were but yeah I actually thought um, if because it uh, tells you to go down to a 3.75 for like the ribbings the ribbings um, you use 3.75 needle millimeter needle so I thought it would be, it would cinch in quite a bit, 
but actually it, it lays flat, like com almost completely flat, so I'm kind of surprised. Maybe because, I don't know, it's so strange, because I used the 4.5 on the body as recommended, and then I would think you would use like a 4.0 for like the bot or the ribbing on the body and then a 3.75 on the uh what is this the neckband like usually that would be the recommended but yeah a 3.75 on the ribbing and the bottom it's definitely like perfect and also at the cuff too 3.75 it's like totally seamlessly flush yeah whatever magic that is like it's Hannah Sandler has figured it out for this uh, thing for the sweater yeah it's just so fluffy it's so squishy I just want to wear it already oh and um, for the sleeves I use my trusty Innisfree bag. Um, it was kind of a struggle because this bag is a little too small to be fitting like the whole body and and a sleeve in it. So definitely gotta figure out or find another bag to put the body in, I guess, or the sweater in so I could work on the sleep. <sighs> Maybe I'll buy Tiffany Lee's typical blisses bag if she or her drawstring bag if she puts it on her store. I don't know how much the shipping would be though. Like But I don't think she's gonna put it on there anytime soon. Um, let's see. And then for the swatches, I finished. I finished. I think I showed you this last time. It's the uh, one that didn't work out. It's too scratchy on my neck or prickly. So prickly that it hurts. And the mohair improves it, but it's not enough. And I don't want to use double strand mohair with this fiber. Um, but yeah, it just didn't fit the needle size because it's like a fingering way. But and the uh, pattern, the Ingrid sweater requires a DK, so out so I made a another swatch for the Ingrid sweater um, and you can see the diff can you see the difference it's like so stark like one's super loose one's pretty tight so yeah that's what you want to look for, for like a structured knit, something that can hold its own shape and you don't, you, need a, you don't need a fuss about it. And a hip gauge on this one. So that's good. And I knit it flat and not in the round because I mean, Petit Knit also knits her swatches flat. So whatever, I guess. Um, although the eyelets are like really tiny, but I think I just didn't do it the way that is recommended in the pattern, so because I did this before I bought it, I just bought it like this week, and um, this is a combination I'm using. 
It's the Flamingo Double Soft Merino by Name for Olive, and the Soft Silk Mohair in Puffy Rose by Name for Olive. Um, yeah. I think at most I, use, I need to use nine balls of this, and then five to six balls of um, the Soft Silk Mohair. I mean, I'm sure I'll use less than recommended, but whatever, who knows. And then you also need to use a 4.0. Yes, 4.0. But then I looked at the pattern and it says you need to use a 4.0 millimeter, three millimeter, or four millimeter, three millimeter, and a 3.5 millimeter. And I'm like, I didn't see the three millimeter before, but yeah, that's for the um, the one of the last steps in the neckband or the the turtleneck, because technically it's a turtleneck. Um, yeah, so we'll see if I do that because. I don't want to use the 3.0 that I do have because I'm using it for something else and then I also have another 3.0 needle but it's metal and the end isn't like sharp like this it's not sharp because it's like um, a little flat at the top which is so weird um, it's by Drops, it's a fixed needle as well. These are interchangeable, but <clears throat> these are 4.0, and it's actually pretty hard to find a 3.0 interchangeable, but um, I know Chiaogu um, makes those, but those are metal and what wood, and I recently found out that CNIT, uh, Kinky, Ami, something I don't remember but you see it sells it on Etsy like officially like their official store on Etsy um, but it's like $19 to ship but I mean it's still cheaper um, even though that it takes $19 to ship from Japan um, it's cheaper than getting it in Canada <laughs> so there's that and I mean because they ship from warehouse it's like always available so yeah I'm planning maybe to get those if I can get all my yarns or my summer knitting projects um, ready but I'm hesitant to buy yarn because I have more sweater projects even though summer is coming. Yeah. And I made this swatch because um, I wanted to make a pillow case. But then I realized just how much skeins you need for the... Um, what do you call it? The Technicolor tote, not the tote bag. Technicolor, um, it's not the pillow because that's a fingering weight, but uh, it's a Technicolor shopper bag thing. Yeah, because that's used um, a DK weight Yes, it uses a DK weight, but I want to use a very cheap Drops Alaska. Um, so it's like a 100% pure new wool or something like that. Um, and it's an Aran weight, so I don't know if I want to use two strands or three strands. But either way, it, it will take at least 
15 skeins because the shopper um, took 15 skeins about um, but then also it's a slightly smaller in, in one length because it's like 50 centimeters by 40 but I need to be 52 by 52 centimeters so I'll probably need more than that to get what I want and for the gradation or for the gradient um, I'm just gonna do a super simple one and not something is so complicated in the as the Technicolor um, pillowcase or the Technicolor series by Petit Knit like that's so involved and there's so much color changing happening that I want to do the least amount of color changes possible and it's actually kind of interesting the back it's like really uh, it looks like a seed stitch or something but yeah and the front is like super flat um, I used an Arena DK for the for the blue and then there's like a worsted DK and then a DK light DK um, and these are just scraps that I had lying around and so I just used it in this but yeah, I definitely like the Erin way better. And then if you put it up to the light, it's um, a lot tighter. But I this is also 6.5, so I'll probably need to swatch it again in an 8 millimeter needle. Or sorry, I said I should have said that I used a 6.5 millimeter needle for this whole thing. But yeah, like two strands of light decay is not it. Or even worse than a DK, like I think definitely you need an Aaron. At least two strands of Aaron for a six point five. So I probably do need that third strand. Um but now it's hot as shit, so Maybe I'd have to put this on the back burner until like October, September ish, um, early like a month before uh, it starts cooling down again. Maybe that's when I'll get um, more yarn for this pillow project. But even though it's a lot of skeins, it's not as expensive. Um, as getting like double Sunday or any other skeins because I think it's like three bucks per skein ish um, and that's like the cheapest it could possibly get unless you use cotton but I want to use wool because it's like stretchier and way easier to knit or it feels better to knit uh, wool or basically any animal fiber it just except for so that's a whole different thing um but yeah it just has a lot of give um and the pattern or yeah the patterning is so simple it's like slip stitches and then you change where the yarn goes, yeah. Um, so I finished those swatches and then I just started this last night. Um, it's because I totally forgot to swatch for this. I was gonna cast this on yesterday, but um, I cast this on a different color. This is just my extra skein that I don't know what to do with. So I'm just swatching with it. Um, and I'm swatching for the Olive Top by KFO Nanny for Olive. And yeah, this is how far I got. Not very far. Oh, I can't even see that. Oh, it's kind of dark. Um, yeah.
I was also actually kind of surprised that they only use one type of, um, what is it, increase uh, for the body because it looks not like, it looks really different from the olive cardigan because that one's like, I don't know, it just looks better. And now I'm wondering if I should just adapt it so it's basically the same pattern as the olive cardigan because this is slightly different. Um, the olive top is slightly different from the olive cardigan or the way they do their increases at least for the pattern. Um, yeah. Well, at least I know what to do with this extra skein now. I think I'm just gonna continue to use it as my swatching for summer knits if I'm gonna use this uh, for future projects because, I mean, it's, I think the cheapest silk on the market right now is only like uh, 6.5 euros. And that's like around seven USD um, per skein, and all my local yarn shops, if they if they sell silk, it's usually um, like twenty twenty five dollars per twenty five gram, and this is fifty grams, so yeah, that's a huge difference in price. I think Knit Picks has uh, 100 grams per $25, but that's a lace weight, so then you'd have to double it to get at least fingering. Um, so that will increase the cost significantly. Uh, I think it's like... But then you get a lot of yardage, give and take, I don't know. Um, let me think. And then, I know there is a shop in Seattle that, or Shop La Mercerie, they sell pure silk, but all the colors I want, they don't have enough silk. So, yeah. But the pure silk over there at that shop is like 10 bucks. But it's still cheaper to get it through online through Knitting for Olive, which kind of sucks uh, for Shop La Mercerie. But if you don't want to pay shipping, I guess you. But then you still have to pay shipping because you have to buy something that's over 150. But if you're just buying the silk, or if, if you're only buying for one project, then it's not worth it um unless you're buying sort of quantity of a what is it called indie dyers because they stock like a lot of indie dyers um but i mean those get sold out so fast like <laughs> it's pretty hard to get to be on time for those um or at least the shop updates. Because all the ones I want are always gone. So, and I don't know, just like forking that much money for something I could get cheaper is kind of not my jam, you know? Um, but maybe if I make if I make more money, then maybe I'll be like, blah, I have to buy everything. <laughs> if only I could be like that. <laughs> um, I think that's it. I'm gonna cast on uh, for the olive top soon. But got to cast on the Ingrid sweater. Um, so I can 
knit on the olive top when it's really hot or when I want to go outside and knit, then I can um, and then I can work on the Ingrid sweater when it's cold or yeah or something. Yeah, but I do recommend the Pavlova pullover. It's such a fun knit. You just keep going and keep going. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah, I don't know why I just have such a big problem doing magic loop on stockinette. Like, I don't know what the hell is wrong with me, but yeah, stockinette's just find it really hard to do if it's magic loop. Or at least for sleeves. Like that's super annoying. And it takes me like twice as long to knit it. Um oh I should drink. Drink everybody, drink. Uh, it's cold already and I'm getting cold by sitting here because this room is colder than outside and I think it's like 73 ish so it definitely cooled down quite a bit I mean kind of too cold to wear this dress but yeah and actually I'm kind of worried about the shaping for the Ingrid sweater because um, Petite Knit made, I actually don't know her name. So Petite Knit made the Ingrid sweater like sloped, like significantly sloped yoke on, on the shoulders. But I have a very boxy shoulder. It's like almost a freaking straight line and hers is like significantly sloped like this. So I'm just kind of worried that it'll look weird on me, like it'll just like bunch up here or something, or I don't know. I'm just a little worried about it. So I'm thinking, should I do less German Shiro's or stop it? I don't know. a short episode but maybe because I have trouble talking and putting my thoughts together maybe it's super long but hopefully it's not that long because only just now my voice is like giving out so yeah I hope you guys have a good day have a sunny day spend some time outside because I definitely haven't um and I hope you have like a good time knitting and hope you knit as fast as you want to knit. Um, or make whatever you want. If you guys want like a Kumu Himo like beginner guide, I could do that, but I don't know. It's been quite a while since I did, did that. Um, but yeah, just let me know in the comments what your summer knitting plans are, what you are making despite the warm weather, <laughs> like sweaters. So, yeah. See you guys next time on the next podcast. Hopefully next week.